If you needed a COVID-19 test recently, you know they have been harder to find than a first edition comic book or a hot traded baseball card. They are in short supply during the latest surge. On today's To Your Wellbeing, we're breaking down what you need to know so you can get tested and stay safe. To help do that, we've got Dr. Laura Murray from Cone Health. She is Cone Health Medical Area Group Medical Director. First up, let's talk about the emergency department and COVID testing. Uh, we've had people who say, if I can't find a test, can I just go to the emergency room and get tested? Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, really we want to reserve the emergency room for sick people so that they can be uh, recognized as, as having sick or, or emergency kind of medical conditions. If really all you need is a test, we really want you to go someplace else. We want you to go to the mass testing site at the Coliseum, call your doctor's office and see if they can do a test, um, consult your local pharmacies, go to conehealth.com backslash testing and see if there's a test available on, on a timeline that's good for you. But really, please do not go to the emergency room just for a test. What are the emergency rooms like these days? Are they fully booked up and long waits like we were seeing? They're pretty busy. They are doing a lot to manage the patient flow. But again, we just don't want to add um, folks who are not emergencies to that traffic. It's just not, it's not um, um, a good use of resources and we don't want for there to be a situation where we're taking any, any kind of distraction um, and causing a diversion from people who are emergently sick. So if someone goes to one of Cone Health's testing locations, what is that process like? Do they have to register? Can they just show up? We really prefer you make an appointment. It's very easy to make an appointment on the website. Um, again, it, it's conehealth.com backslash testing, and it, it, the website will walk you through how to make an appointment. That allows us to have the staff that we need to help people um, when the people are coming. How quickly do you get those results from Cone Health? Right now with the demand, it's taken a couple of days. So that's a, a particular kind of test that goes to the lab and takes a day or two to come back. And that is, I think that is a um, standard in the area right now. So who actually needs a COVID test and when do they need to get it? That is a great question. So I think the first thing is if you are face to face with somebody um, sharing air for more than a couple of minutes, you know, that that's, and they turn up positive, then you need to think about going and getting yourself a test, right? And, and so there are various recommendations out there. I think the CDC says five days after you were exposed. The health department says something in the range of three to six days after you were exposed. But if you're sharing air with somebody uh, for any length of time who turns up positive, you need to go get a test. The second thing is um, if, if you have symptoms, if you have something new respiratory wise or a new fever, you need to just go get a test as soon as you've got symptoms. And if you get a, ne a negative test result the first time, does that mean you're in the clear? You know, you got to remember with tests, they're pretty good, but they're measuring a point of time. You know, it's a um, uh, infections are a process. And so you may be capturing um, um, a moment in time before you were making a whole lot of germ particles. And so I would say that if you feel strongly that you had a real exposure to somebody who had COVID, um, you might rethink, you might go ahead and get another test a couple of days later if you got an, a, ne a negative test first. That's a great question. Okay, while, well, you're, have, while you're waiting for those results to come back, what precautions do you need to take? It's really best if you can stay home. If you are fully vaccinated, um, I, I think there's some flexibility about, about whether you absolutely are required to stay home. If you are not fully vaccinated, then you really do need to stay home. You need to just, if you've got symptoms, period, we need to know that you've got a negative test um, and, and an appropriate time period has passed before you can go back out in public. If you have just had an exposure, um, then you do need to really stay home um, if you haven't been fully vaccinated until you know that it's negative. And that's because we know that the vaccine makes a big difference in how, much, how infectious you are, how much of a contagious threat you might be. Why is it so important to actually get a test and know? I mean, we're all wearing masks out in public anyway, for the most part. Uh, why do we need to know? I think right now um, it has a lot to do with just how infectious this variant is. We know there's a whole lot of germ out there and a whole lot of people who have it. And we know that this continues to represent a threat to our, our sicker and more vulnerable members of the population. And so I think just knowing if I, as a person who has been exposed or who has symptoms, just knowing uh, with a high degree of likelihood, if I have it is really important, then I can protect others. 
Well, do you guys do the rapid test or the PCR test only? Uh, at, the, at the test sites, that's currently PCR. They're in the practices. If your primary care provider happens to be offering tests, that is typically a PCR test. Is it safe to buy those rapid tests online that we keep seeing everywhere? I think they're a good, uh, a good option. I think that they, um, in this, particularly in this situation, when there's so many people that have it out there and so many people with symptoms, I think that that's just a wonderful option. I think you have to always have in the back of my mind if I've got pretty convincing symptoms or if I've had a pretty convincing exposure, a lot of face time with somebody who turns out positive, then I probably need to take a negative home test with a grain of salt. Um, and consider retesting, but yeah, I think they're a great option. And just to clarify, some medical experts were saying if you have symptoms but you haven't been exposed to anyone that you know of, maybe don't get a test. What do you think about that? I think that there's so much out there right now, honestly, that it's hard to know if you've had a credible exposure. I mean, you know in the situation that your friend calls you and says, you know, we were having coffee the other day and, and I have COVID now. Uh oh. <laughs> that, right? So, so, but you may not know that. You may not know that. And so I think that it's never unreasonable to get a test, even if you think the odds are a little bit on the low side. Again, your, your threshold for retesting, if you get a negative test, might be how credible you think the threat was. But, the, but I think it, it, I wouldn't disregard the possibility of COVID for anybody right now. You were talking about there's so much out there right now. Where are we at in this pandemic? How would you describe our point in time? Well, um, Omicron, uh, nationally seems to be having a pretty sharp upslope and we're expecting this to be a pretty narrow peak compared to previous, um, although obviously it, it's not, um, not something that seems fast when we're right here in the middle of it. Um, I think we're approaching the, the estimates that we have put us at, at maybe having a peak sometime in the next several days to a week and um, hopefully then, then uh, a rapid drop off, you know, over the next several, you know, Three, four weeks after that so I, th I think we're hoping that we're very close to the peak and starting to come down soon well as we are heading to the peak in the next couple of days then um, we know you have more questions about coronavirus and we are here to answer them through six o'clock all you need to do is text us your questions at 336-379-5775 we'll be right back